see them. The Leafs had a pretty good first period, even though they trailed 2-0. Then narrowed the gap to 2-1, but then for the second time in the game, took a bench penalty for having too many men on the ice. That led to this goal by Mike Bossy that stood as the winner as the Islanders romp to a 9-2 victory. Game two was Thursday night. Again, the Leafs played rather well in the first period, holding the game scoreless. But the Islanders, twice in less than a minute, scored for a 2-0 lead. That was the second goal by Trache. He scored three on the night. The Islanders won 5-1. And both teams have switched sights now, moving from New York to Toronto for this, the third game in this best-of-five series, Islanders and Leafs. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dave Hodge. The big story tonight, can the Leafs make home ice work for them? They have not been able to do that all season long, and the Islanders have been the best road team in the league. Statistics will tell this story as we look at the Islanders' road record during the regular season compared to the Leafs' home record. The Islanders, the best road team in the league, scored 20 more points away from home than the Leafs did here at Maple Leaf Garden. So that really does describe the pregame picture for tonight to hear what we might see. Let's go to Bob Cole, our play-by-play -play announcer with Gary Dornhoff. Well, the Leafs were in trouble last weekend. They came out of it. They're in trouble again this weekend. Gary, can they do it this time? Well, they're old saying the backs are against the wall and, uh, you know, when a tiger is cornered, you never know what he's going to do. But I think, first of all, it's important to stop Trotchy and Bossy. Those two guys for the Islanders have been the killers. Mike Nikoluk has the last line change, so he can play the players he wants to do tonight, and perhaps that'll help. But I think further, Bob, it's a game of pride tonight, not only for the Leafs, but also the uniform that they wear. Okay, Gary, here again is Dave. As in Long Island, it's our pleasure to welcome Chico Resch to our broadcast team. You know this Islander club and what they might be thinking now. Is there any chance they would be overconfident with a two-game lead? I don't think so, Dave. They were pretty serious when they were up 7-2 uh, to two in the first game, and I thought there might be a letdown then. And I just heard that, you know, it's business as usual, and they're, they're out to repeat from, you know, as last year they won the Stanley Cup. So I don't look for a letdown at all. And playing on the road should not bother them. No, as a matter of fact, they like to play on the road, and they especially like to play here, so the Leafs are really up against the wall. Thank you to Glenn Resch. Now, a big game going in Edmonton tonight. The Canadians facing elimination. Let's go to the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton and get a pregame report from John Wells. It's easily the biggest night in Edmonton's short NHL history as the youthful Oilers stand ready to pull off the biggest playoff upset in years. With a surprising 2-0 series lead, the Oilers have the favored Canadians on the ropes and two home games to try and put them away. The surprise has not been seven assists, including two game winners by Wayne Gretzky, but the play of 21-year-old Andy Moog. The rookie goaltender has been an incredible story in holding great Montreal marksmen to only four goals in two games. But if there is a team in hockey today capable of reversing earlier fortunes, the Montreal Canadiens are that team and not the most enthusiastic of Edmonton hockey supporters is willing to write the Canadians off just yet. And throughout tonight's Leaf Islander telecast in Toronto, you'll see highlights from here in Edmonton. Thank you, John. We'll look forward to being kept up to date on the Oilers-Canadians game and our Stanley Cup playoff coverage from Toronto will return in just a moment. told me today the Leafs will turn it around tonight. Al Harbour says they should wrap it up. All we know about these two statements, one of them will be wrong. There are your officials, Bruce Hood, Wayne Bonney, and Gerard Goche. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Cole with Chico Resch and Gary Dornhofer, and Billy Smith is in goal for the Islanders tonight. He's played in both games for the Islanders in this series. Yuri Serra. Look at that playoff average. Chico, nothing to be proud about so far. But, you know, the goaltender's only as good as his team, and hopefully he'll get a little more help tonight. Well, Gary, here we are again. Last weekend, same thing, and we're into the pressure cooker once more. Well, right off the bat, I think this is the line matchup, perhaps, that Nikolak wants. Gerlego against Trache. We'll have to wait and see. It's underway. Duras is on the defense with Salming. Salming with Gerlego to center. He missed it. Maloney was offside. And it's called back. Derlego, Maloney, and Vive starting for Toronto against Trache, Bourne, and Bossy. Putvin and Morrow on the defense. I think if one guy is going to give you leadership in a dressing room, it's a Dan Maloney. He's always been that way. And it shows in his 
style in the Allen. He was one of the few Leafs that really applied the pressure body checking wise. Bossy has it near center. That's knocked down, cleared into the leave zone. This is Salming and Bossy coming in behind him. Salming stops to go the other way for Maloney. The long pass down the ice. It might go all the way for Icing. Coming back quickly is Langevin. And it's called. Well, I'll tell you this much, Chico and Gary. The fans seem to be alive tonight in this first 30 seconds. They sure do. We were, you know, we all weren't sure how much excitement would be here tonight with the Leafs being so uh, down and having lost two tough ones. But the fans are really into this, and it's, it is surprising. And if anything, it's going to give them a big lift. They've got to start early. And believe me, when you're playing, it's really helped that the fans are behind you. We haven't heard them like this for a while, Gary. That's right. You know, and the Leafs, they've only scored the first goal in two occasions of the last 17 games. I'd like to see them get the first goal once. Trotsche with the draw, but Guris hopped on it right away. Then he was bumped by Bob Bourne, got the pass to Maloney, and the Leafs just shoot it out. Coming back is Bossy, back to the net, cleared it up high on the glass. The Leafs trap it, Maloney couldn't get to it. Three Islanders break out. This is Bossy and Trotsche, dangerous rush, poking up beautifully in front of the net by Guris. And the Leafs clear it down the ice. Big play there. Langevin touches it. And icing is called against Toronto. Brian Trotche, one of the guys on that two-on-one break. Trotche and Bossy, what a dangerous combination early in the game. And uh, Duras makes a pretty good play. Makes a heck of a play here. Two of the worst guys you could have coming down on you. Mike kind of uh, didn't really keep his head up. He wasn't looking at the defenseman, and he didn't realize that the defenseman had moved over to Brian, and he could have maybe walked in and shot. But a good start for uh, Juris. A play like that makes a defenseman confidence, I would think. Merrick comes to center ice for New York. Bob Nystrom is number 23. And Howitt, number 8, on the other side. Anderson, Boschman, Zanussi for Toronto. From the draw. Along the boards, Turnbull couldn't move it out. Howitt takes his shot. First stop of the game for Yuri Shira. And he covered up. I'll tell you, the Leafs are alive in the first minute of play as Boschman shoots it in. In back of the net goes Lorimer. He was bumped. The Leafs pile in after it. Good port checking by Toronto. Turnbull knocked into next from near the blue line. They begin to rough it up, and it comes back to the Toronto zone. Melrose played it ahead. Howard is bumped over there by Boschman, and it's cleared in back of the Leaf goal. Howard and Tanusi had something going. So do the Leafs now with Anderson just missing the pass at the blue line. And it's touched back there. Icing is called again against Toronto. From Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, this is Stanley Cup 81. There it is, no score. They played a minute and 43 seconds of the opening period. Carroll, Gillies, and Keller for New York. Kept the line outside. Hotback couldn't keep it in. He's on the defense there with Ken Morrow. And the Leafs have the Darrell Sittler line on with Martin and Paymon. Well, as long as they can keep away from Merrick, Howitt, and Nystrom, they might be able to contribute in the way of goals tonight. Hot pass shoots one from center ice. This could be reversed. Nope, the Islanders pick it up. No icing. Cleared in and Salming on the boards against Carroll. They get a whistle for a faceoff in the leap zone. Maria Salming still nursing that shoulder injury, but decided, look, at this is the playoffs. I've got to be there. If they give him enough time to handle that puck, he can be a real asset behind the blue line. Yoris into the corner. Great to hear the fans here in the gardens. They've started the chant in the first two minutes of this game. There's Wilt Paymont's weak shot stopped by Billy Smith. He hasn't had very much to do yet. Billy tipped it near the line. And here come the Islanders. The pass on the wing. Marini coming in. He got away from Juris's check out of it for the Carroll. And they pile in front of the net of the Leafs. Break it up, come right back. Will Paymont to center ice. Paymont takes a long shot, trips one high on the glass. Martin looked for it, but Billy Smith was covering up. Now Carroll goes back to the zone net for New York. In the corner. Morrow's pass goes astray all the way down the ice. Dickey now as both teams are changing. 
Nearing the three-minute mark of the opening period, no score. Juris feeds it back. Chalming's pass up on the wing. Having some trouble moving it. Now Hickey goes in looking for it as the Leafs shoot it in. Billy Smith out of the net, clearing it in the corner. Langevin coming out, hitting the line to center. Good pass on the left side. Born is back ball. Here comes Bossy. Bossy in back of the net. Centered it. And there's going to be a penalty for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Turnbull picking it up. The puck that is. And an interference penalty called against Toronto. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. No Durlego got the interference penalty. Well, he was on Brian Troche. Watch to the center of your screen, trying to take him out of the play. Mike Bossy, of course, trying for that feed. But the power play, four power play goals for the Islanders in 12 opportunities. This will be a good sign of the Leafs can hold off the Islanders while this penalty is being served. Chico, it'll give them a great lift. For interference, time 3.14. Trottier, Bourne, Bossy, that's Bossy. Back to the line, cut fast shot. Down in front of the net, Bossy came looking for it. Here's Trottier cutting right in front. He was stopped by Sarah, who stood his ground and stopped him. Cole into the center ice area. Pearson gets it up to center. Bossy getting loose again. In front is Bourne. The pass to Trottier. Great save by Sarah. Big goal taken here, Jingle. Great save. Two of them. Brian Trottier allowed to walk all alone in front on one. They're in close. Here we're going to see the first save here. Denny's going to take a shot from the point pot man. The rebound, first of all, Sirwa makes a nice play to uh, clear the puck. Then Brian here is allowed to walk right in front. A tough play for a goalie. Then the rebound's going to come back. And here comes Brian in again. Another good save, and he's fired up. Live action again. Pearson laid it into the side. Bourne got it back to him. Hot fan over here to Bourne. He takes it off the boards. Bourne cutting in. Can't shoot it. Two Islanders in the corner. No one checking there. Now Bourne. The Leafs set up that box, though. Comes back to Bourne. Takes the shot. Rolls it right in front. And Potvin just failed to control it. He gave it to Bourne. Pearson. Into Bourne again. This is Trotje. To Bossy. They pass it around beautifully. No one's shooting yet. Now Pearson lost it. And it comes back to center ice for 50 seconds. Left in the penalty to Derlego. The Islanders coming in again. Potvin took the shot. Paymont will shoot it down in. Well, that power play is still nice to watch, but uh, you have to be impressed with the way the players move around, getting in the open, and the good puck control by the Islanders. Now it's Paymon and Martin killing this penalty. They're keeping the Islanders inside the line. 30 seconds left in that penalty now. Harrison gets it up to center ice. Here they come. Goring gets it over to Gillies. It's knocked away by the lead. Martin out over the line. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Leafs doing a great job. Islanders passing it around inside the line. No great shots. No great opportunities. Paymont knocked down. Here's the chance for Gillies. Great save again by Gary Serra. Four seconds left for the penalty. This place will go wild now. Derleko is back on. Here's Taller coming in for Gillies. He gets in front. The killing shot. It's knocked away. Robert gets it to Derleko at center. Leafs at full strength. Their Lego is upended. Islanders come right back. No score. With five and a half minutes gone in the first period. McEwen lets one blast. And there's Jura again. Hanging on to it. This is Hockey Night in Canada. From Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. 5.37 gone in the first period. There's no score. The Islanders have outshot Toronto 6-1. to one. Four of the shots came on that power play. That's Shan. First turn for Shan. Coming to Hickey. Missed it. Got it back again. Battled it away from Nystrom. Lorimer flipped it back to the net. McEwen starting out. Nearly lost it against Turnbull. Leafs breaking it up. It's chopped back in by Boudreau. Smith out of the net to clear it away for Lorimer. No score. We're nearing the seven minute mark in the first period. Merrick nearly got away. Now Lorimer at his own blue line for the New York Islanders. 
Nystrom took the pass at center. Nero looking quite confident, played it up on the board. Here's Pupo coming in. Think he might have a chance. It's in too deep, and he's stopped by Lorimer. Now it comes right in front. And that weak backhander by Robert was just wide. Howard, can he get out? Yes, he gets it to Nystrom. Up to center. Took the long shot off the boards, and Salming takes over. There's Salming going back to the net for Toronto. No one on this left side. And the Islanders have it again. Morrill to Potfang. They're changing as the play goes on. Salming intercepted a pass near center. Putting the Islanders back again. Now the pass to Merrick. He took it on a skate, played it in. Bad pass for Gillies. He couldn't handle it. But here's Putman. Look out. He got away from that check, and it's over the boards into the crowd. I'll tell you, fellas, if the Leafs get a goal around this point, they're going to have quite a lift. The tempo, tempo. You know, it's an exciting game, and look at uh, Mr. Imlach. He, maybe he doesn't think so. I don't know, but we've got end-to-end -end action. But Sira looks like he is really working hard. I saw him on the way to the game tonight, and I said, Yuri, are you nervous? And he said no, and then I happened to look at his tie, and he had it on backwards. I said, are you sure? He looks nervous, but he looks like he's into it. You'd never say, Chico, the way he's standing up there. Here's the dandy pass down on the wing. Anderson couldn't cradle it, though, and cut in. Hot man back of the net. Zanuzzi kept it in. Anderson put it in front. Went by everyone and behind Boschman. The Islanders now shoot it down the ice. And that's Salming back there. He's on with Duras. They played seven minutes, 30 seconds of the opening period. There's no score. I'm Bob Cole with Chico Resch and Gary Dornhofer in the booth here at Maple Leaf Garden. Do or die game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Sellout crowd here tonight, and they've been very lively in the first part of this period. Icing now called against New York. When you were talking to Sira, did you get, uh, get talk about goalie strategy, anything like that? Give him a few pointers? Well, uh, I told him if uh, he didn't let in any goals, there was a good chance his team would win. <laughs> but uh, when I say he's, he looks a little nervous, I don't mean that he's off his game. That's good. If you're nervous, you're, your reflexes are sharper, you're into the game. The first save he made, he dropped the puck and then took the body on Wayne Merrick. So he's ready to take the body, and he's really in, into the game. All right, Wayne, Quebec where the Flyers, with a win tonight, can finish the Nordiques off. There is no score in the second period. Now the Islanders, that's Bourne trying to move it down to center. Bossy couldn't get the pass. Bourne falls. He was just crossing the line and was upended. Now Durlego comes away. Bocce ran into him, got the elbow up. I think he's going to get the call for elbowing. And again, to wrap it up now, the Islanders get in the penalty. They might get more penalties, too. That first one, for sure, Bossy right in front of Bruce Hood. But Maloney also gets the gate, probably for holding. With a score, the New York Islanders nothing. Toronto nothing. This is Stanley Cup 81. Trotsche got the first penalty, and then Maloney got one. Bob, I don't think that Maloney knew that his team had a delayed penalty, or he probably would have played that a little differently. But, you know, sometimes when players are so high... You know, you take a type of penalty like that, which isn't really a good one. Well, let's face it, you're right. He's got to be high. He's got a tough assignment. He's going to check for, uh, Mike Bossy, and you've got to get up and be high for that type of situation. Sometimes you get overreacting a little bit. Well, here at 8.09, they're five aside. Trotje of the Islanders, Maloney of the Leafs. That comes back to center. Goring after Melrose. Melrose got there first. It's cleared into the New York zone. Ormer's pass to Merrick. He pushed it off the boards to center ice. And Melrose sets it through the middle for Paymon and Sittler. Sittler tries the shot. Here's Turnbull following the play. Gets in front. And it's knocked away by a glove. It comes out across the line. The Islanders cannot pick it up. They do. Goring picked it up. And, of course, that was gloved ahead. It'll go back inside the Islanders' line for the faceoff. Barry Melrose and uh, is not the most talented player in the world, but the guy gives it uh, his all every single time he's out there. Now that's making contact. Hitting uh, Anders Keller, his first game and uh, first hit of the game. Actually, that's Keller's first uh, Stanley Cup playoff game ever. What a free agent he turned out to be. Ooh. Just coming back from a groin injury. Feels that he's ready to play. 
about 99 percent. A minute and 31 seconds left in the two penalties. Maloney of the Leafs, Trottier of the Islanders. And we have 11.22 left in the period. There is no score. Erlego against Merrick. Got the draw. To the line and out over. Melrose has to wait now. Got away from Goring. To five. Erlego speeding in. He's got the legs. Erlego didn't get there in time. It was flipped over the glass into the crowd. You know what uh, baffles me that forwards don't do more often when a goaltender comes out of his net, instead of trying to check him, why not get right in front of him, prevent him from getting back in the net? That's right, it's legal. And, and it's, uh, a, it's a legal uh, thing to do, and uh, perhaps your team can grab a hold of that puck and have that empty net. Fortunately, Gary, a lot of other forwards don't feel that way, or we'd be in big trouble. I know you used to do it every once in a while, and then the goalie, while with Smitty, he, I guess a lot of forwards don't like to get too close to him anywhere in the ice. No score of this game. Big game in Edmonton tonight. Canadians down two games to the Oilers, 2-0. And we'll be showing you the scoring plays from that game as this one progresses. It comes to Turnbull. It is knocked down, and here's a two-on-one as Goring goes to the line, and Merrick carries in. Merrick shoots, scores! Merrick took the shot on the short side as Sarah had moved over to cover on the other Islander, Goring, who was coming in. Now, Turnbull was caught in the play, but he did get back. But it looks like Sira, I don't know, was he expecting the pass over? He gave a lot of room on that short side. He, uh, unfortunately, uh, he pulled up a little bit. You'll see he's down here good, but as, as uh, Merrick shoots, see, he pulls up, so his balance, he's off back balance. Back on his heels. He's back on his heels, and he isn't able to move low to the puck. Good shot by Merrick, catching the corner, and the Islanders, like they did in the other two games, jump off to that one nothing lead. So the Islanders are first blood again tonight. one nothing. Tipped back by Goring. On the boards, five is down. Solomon tried to stop Goring. Now it's called. Loved ahead again. So face-off coming up outside the line. There's Keller. First playoff game. He's in great company, Chico, with this crew. The defending Stanley Cup champions, the New York Islanders. The lead, 16th overall, and barely. Got by Washington. It's tipped down the ice again. Vibe has a chance. He got in, hustling beautifully. Joris took a shot, hit near the net. Here's Salmi breaking in, set it up for Gerlego. And that was knocked away by Keller in time. Into the corner, it's still loose. Penalty coming up again. This one against the New York Islanders. Holding on Keller. Hockey night in Canada will continue in a moment. Oh, Gary, Keller is gone for holding. You'll see it right in the corner as the Leafs are trying to do a real good job of forechecking here, and Keller will grab a hold of Ricky Vive. And so the Leafs, who have only scored one playoff goal in this series, get a four on three. Sickler, Robert, Paymont, Salming. That's Paymont. Looks for Salming. He tipped it. Robert has it. He'll go to Salming again. No, he shoot it. And it's knocked down in front, and it's cleared. Robert lost his stick. He's coming back. Bourne watching him. Loved ahead, of course. That's called. That's a good play by Rennie Robert. Number one, his, as soon as he gloves the puck to his teammate, the play is whistled down. It gives him an opportunity to get back there and get a different stick and get everything faced off right. 9.59 left in the first period. One to nothing, New York. Well, it didn't take the Edmonton Oilers long to get on the board, and they are the real surprise hockey club. Hagman giving the Oilers that one nothing lead on a shot past Sevigny. What do you think, Chico? Are they gone? Well, it's a little early to tell, but with that crowd there tonight, I'm sure that really got things heated up in Edmonton. Just what the Leafs could use. Salming gets it in for Paymont. Paymont around the net. Taking a look. Paymont. Still has it. Back to the line, Robert. Salming now. Over for Robert. The shot by Robert was blocked. 
Robert gets it, knocks it along the board. Paymont has a chance to sell it up. Gets it back to Robert. Here comes the shot. That's blocked again. And the Islanders break out. Trotsche coming in with Bourne. Up and up. There's going to be a penalty to Robert. Live from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Gary looks like the Leafs don't want a man advantage. Well, Rennie Robert had a couple opportunities from the point. Using the slap shot, both were blocked. This time he had to haul down Trotche. But I always felt that for a point man, if you can just risk that puck through, get it by that first defender, you can always have the deflection by one of your forwards. And deflections, of course, are nightmares for goaltenders. There's a drive just wide. Comes back to Lorimer. He took a shot. That's deflected into the corner. McEwen back with the blue line again. Shoots it to the corner for Nystrom. Salming all over him. Merrick. He's holding it along the boards. They get a whistle. Chico Rush. I suppose there's no way to defend on deflections. Um, we're referring, as Gary just said, those two shots by Robert. Maybe it would have been better through the middle and low. Well, that's true. You know, the thing is, if the puck comes in at half speed, a lot of times the goalie makes his move first. If it comes in real quick, he's able to split on it, deflect it away, and the play's dead. Now Dura starting out. Comes up to center ice. Took a long shot. This is Boschman looking for it. Nice from after him. In the corner, McEwen. Played it back to the net. Lorimer starting back, hitting the line, going to center. Lorimer up over the line. He was stopped right there. The Islanders have to hustle back to get on side. McEwen was given some time and now shoots it in. Sarah tipped it out for Boschman. It's one to nothing, New York. During the 12 minute mark as Zanussi goes in. Good save by Billy Smith. A quick shot by Zanussi. A pot man stop. Terry Martin shoots it in. Smith having some trouble back of the net, hanging on to it. Hot man will bring it out again. He nearly lost it right in front of the goal. Now Martin shoots it across the line and Hot Man knocked it down. Pearson coming out. Long pass goes into Bossy. Look out for this one. Score! Bossy, you could smell that one coming. He had the open side and a 2 nothing New York. There's one guy you can't let that guy have the puck and get those chances on net, but a long rink-wide pass. Bossy picks it up and he just lets it fly. Again, it, you know, Sirock gets most of his goal scored. As he's coming out, the puck is going by him. He doesn't really establish a sound position. Well, that way you're going to create holes that aren't there, and of course, that was a case there where he was falling away from the middle of the net. What set it up was Ian Turnbull made a gamble on a pass where when you're a man short, you say, hey, even if I intercept it, I'm not in that good a position. Play it safe. And especially when Bossy's streaking down the right wing, uh, I know the Leafs have to gamble a little bit, but I don't think you do it on a power play. Well, it's too early in the game to really be taking chances like that. You know, there's a lot of time left. Do nothing. New York Islanders in top of Toronto. Lorimer dumped the high one in on the boards. Melrose goes back. That's Bossy again trying to get it loose. Bossy has it. Back to the net with Trotje. He centered it. And Hickey steals it. Comes out with Robert. Down to center ice. Boudreau catching up. Robert off the boards with it. Took the swing at it. It comes right in front. Smith covering up to the side of the net. The Molson Cup presentation took place earlier this evening. We'll have a look at that now as sales manager Gay Stewart does the honors. It's a great honor for me to present the 1981 Molson Cup to the Maple Leaf Players of the Year. This year, for the first time in the eight-year history of the Molson Cup, we had two winners. Darrell Sittler with his fourth cup win, Wilf Piemont with his first. Darrell and Wilf, congratulations, and please accept these $1,000 checks and our best wishes. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. There they are, the Molson Cup winners, Daryl Sittler and Wolf Paymont, and that was former Leaf star Gay Stewart. Now sales manager with Molson, presenting the check. And the Molson Cup. Merrick to center ice. Out of the net, Sarah. 2-0 New York Islanders. They're nearing the 13-minute mark. 
of the first period. Nyson didn't know he stopped it, and he did. Cleared it across the line, but out into the center ice area, Howitt stopped it. Pearson now getting set for the Langevin on the left wing. Again, Serra has to come out, throwing it off to the side. Chan cleared it out to center ice, and here's Hickey coming in. Hickey up over the line with Robert in front of the net. Hickey lost control of it. Nystrom couldn't move it out. Robert kept it in. Or did he? It's called. Offside at the line. There's Mr. Overtime. Yes, sir. -y. You know, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they got a split in St. Louis. They're back home, and Shutt has scored. They lead the St. Louis Blues one to nothing. A lot of upsets in the making. Uh, Pittsburgh has really had uh, St. Louis's number at home. They beat him 9-2 earlier this year. I think they beat him another time by a closer score, but I can see Pittsburgh upsetting St. Louis. Dennis Potvin, back of the net. Long pass up the line to Big Gillies. He's crossing that Maple Leaf line, trying to stop, gets it back, and the Leafs are there to break it up, and they just throw it to center. Sittler got rid of it. They're offside. What about... Uh, Chico and Gary, the Los Angeles New York Rangers series. I think the Rangers have a shot at upsetting L.A. Well, definitely. They're getting the hot goaltending, which really is important. Uh, they're going home. They got Barry Beck going. He's He was a little bit... He had the tag like Clark Gillies. You know, you don't wake him up. He doesn't get motivated, but he obviously got motivated the last game, so Rangers could be very, very tough. Hot back coming up for New York. Shoots it in. It goes back of the net. Sierra stopping it. Look out. They're on top of him. And he falls. Puck comes loose again. Close call for Sierra. Out of the net. Moro took a shot. Go! Well, that'll stun the crowd. It's now 3-0. The New York Islanders at 14-03 of this first period. Well, there's the example of strength by the wingers along the board to start behind the net. Watch Gillies here. Just out-muscles his man. There's a loose puck, then all it is is a simple shot. As we were talking about before for defensemen, lay it in front of the net. You never know what'll happen. Well, all that traffic in there, Chico, it's tough to see it. You're going to see it hit Hector Marini. Just what you talked about, that tough deflection. And Marini didn't even know it hit him. I mean, he had his back to the play. And that's the way things have been going for the Islanders. But, Bob, they are working for the Blues. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's always two or three coming in on you. The Leafs unable to get much going. Turnbull tries one from the line. That will go into the crowd. Look out, Harold. Right beside him. Now, you have to be impressed with the Islanders, the way they play. Al Arbor had mentioned before the game, I want to go home and watch the Masters golf tomorrow afternoon. But look at the muscle behind the net. They just keep working, forechecking. And then Clark Gillies so effectively takes his man out. And you saw the deflection. Lorimer comes up to center for New York and shoots it in. Zero. Flipped it back to the net. 3-0, the New York Islanders. Goring couldn't stop it. Five at the far side. Shooting it into the Islanders zone and Smith. Just stopped it there. This is McEwen. Got to the line and Goring was just offside. On that last goal, I don't know if uh, Sarah was ready. We'll make it another chance to see it. The Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Well, we see the Sabres. Smith and McKegney have scored. Darcy Rhoda for the Vancouver Canucks. Buffalo victory, and that's all for Vancouver. And I'll tell you, Gary, Sabres played awfully well in that second game over there. There's Zanussi trying a shot. It's deflected into the crowd. Well, we must uh, mention, Bob, that in our intermission, Dave Hodge will talk to the Molson Cup winner, Daryl Sittler and Wolf Paymont, and also there will be a playoff recap. Chico, just look at Sarah now when he loses his stick. That's right, Bob. He may be there physically, but mentally he's scrambling back from the, the losing his stick on the side of the net, and see, he's got caught back in the net. Deep in the net. And if he hadn't lost his stick, he probably would have moved out on it. 4.57. Left in this opening period. Islanders lead it three to nothing. 
This is Salming coming back. Salming back to the net. Nearly lost it against Bossy. Here's Bourne looking for it. Leafs unable to move it out. Now the long pass going astray. Langevin comes back. Flipped it on the boards. And Turnbull at the Leaf blue line. Fans getting restless now, let me tell you. Look at this. Conte intercepting. And a pass to Howitt. Right in front, he tried to set up Bossy. And Salming fell along the ice and blocked the pass. Puck is loose over there. What's this? More penalties? Yes, we've got an interference call coming. Unfortunately, it's on the Leafs again. Probably, uh, maybe Ian Turnbull, maybe Gary Howitt, too, on a rough. I guess it's just Ian. But the Leafs sloppy in their own zone, but that has a lot to do with the way the Islanders are forechecking. We saw Turnbull all over Troche, and he gets the game as Bob Cole had called the play, the interference. Gary, what do they have to do now? They're obviously frustrated, running around in their own zone. They're not getting anything going. It's got to be most frustrating for Toronto. Well, the Leafs tried early in the game. You know, it's just a matter right now is the Islanders have much too much talent for the Leafs, and they're outworking them. Well, okay, but you can't you can't write it off. I know they're down oh, absolutely three goals. Absolutely not. But uh, against the Islanders, I know it's got to be tough, but you have to try. Got to start somewhere. The way this game started out with the fans roaring and jumping and the Leafs showing some, some go. But no such luck. Islanders strike. One, two, three. And they're up three nothing. Leafs shoot this one down the ice. Minute 40 left in Turnbull's penalty. And here's Putman starting it with Goring to center ice. Goring going in on Shan. Jam the brakes on. Back to Gillies. Over to Putman. They'll whip it around again. This one is deflected though. And it goes into the crowd as Melrose got a skate on the way. See that all started in the Islanders zone as a leaf player closed in on Dennis Potvin and all he did was throw it up. Nine straight games the Leafs have lost. Dating back the last three years. It's not a very good position to be in. Ooh, they've got a lot of work to be done here before uh, hopefully get a couple before the end of the period. They need some spark, like Bob was saying. They just need something to get this thing rolling. They haven't been able to do it in the series so far. How do you think Billy Smith feels back there, Chico? He hasn't had hardly anything to do. I'm sure he's not complaining, though. He, he's sure. content to watch. Goring flip one in through. Seems like the Islanders are going in there at will. Turnbull has a minute. Two seconds left in his penalty. Pearson back of the Islanders net. Just dumped it in front and now they start out led by Bourne. Bourne is up to center. Trottier is with him. So is Bossy. There's Bossy after it. He stopped. Dropped it to Trottier. But he was belted by Shan. There's Bourne centering it. Here's the shot, and Sarah goes down. Bossy again to Putman. Another shot. And Sarah stopped that. But oh, mercy. They're giving Sarah a lot of work. A lot of pressure put on, but a couple of things that are very noticeable. The Islanders are never standing still when they pass that puck or the man that's receiving. Always in the goal. That way you can beat your defender. But you see some of the action. Sarah almost left unprotected here. Dennis Potvin gets two shots at it. Rebound coming right back to him. And he's way back in the net and just closes those legs in time. The Leafs have had four shots on goal. The New York Islanders, 11. With 2.51 left in the period. It's 3 to nothing, New York. And, and the Sabres have added another goal. It's now 3-1 to one in that first period. Danny Gare. They should wrap it up tonight in Vancouver. Well, that score has every indication, doesn't it? Yep. But they're playing well. They were skating in that second game. The first game, Vancouver were dumping it out and just laying back. Finally, it caught up to them. They nearly succeeded in their game plan. They led 2-1 to one with a minute and a half left. Here's a chance now. Right in front, McEwen. Stick handles in front. Bourne took the shot. And again, Gary Sarah. I know he's been beaten three times, but he's looked sharp, too. Well, the three goals, uh, they were good goals. I mean, you can't fault him on it. If he had made the saves, it would have been great. 
Now here's when he finally gets a break here. Bobby Bourne at the dot, that is close, and he lets it rip. And, and Yuri coming out, it hits his glove, and he makes a real good save. And uh, My McEwen should have never got by Robert. You know, he's trying to stick check him, went for the fake. And that resulted in the good shot on net. You know, that's what happens when you're down mentally, just what you were talking about, what we've been talking about. Uh, you know, they're just not doing the little extra, the little things. And, and the only way that can change around is a break. I Gotta mean, get a goal. That's it. You look across at the Leaf bench, and you can tell they're down. No question. Not only on the scoreboard, but they're down mentally. And as Chico Resch and Gary Dornhofer pointed out, they need a break to get this thing alive. Putt man, though. Taking no mercy, comes back in with Trottier back of the net. That's Bourne with it. He got it in front. The shot. Goal! He can't beat it. I'll tell you, McEwen let it go. Might have hit something in front. At any rate, a power play goal makes it 4 nothing New York. And you can see by the smiles on the Islanders' faces, they're really enjoying it. McEwen, look at how fast he gets rid of that puck. As soon as it hits his stick, it was either... Oh, that Salming that uh, deflected that? I think so, Gary. Hits right his off body. For you, Salming, yeah. Yep. When, when you're hot, you're hot. And the Islanders, I mean, they just can't miss. Everything they shoot seems to hit something and go in. And again, it's just really a harmless shot. Wrist shot, that snap shot we're talking about. But, but isn't that uh, something else? He didn't wind up with that big slap shot. Perhaps that had blocked. All he did was wrist it in front, and you saw the result. I asked Gary Dornhofer earlier this season, Chico, about what reasons he could come up with why so many goals are being scored. Let's have a look now at Boudreau going in. I'm going to get that one to you, Chico, before very long. It comes back in front, and Howard just tipped it out to Merrick. Merrick gets up over the line, dropped it to Nystrom. Great play, but the shot was wide. Now Howard in front to Nystrom again, and the leads break out. Down goes Robert on the right side as Hickey gives it to him. And they're offside. Chico, a lot of goals being scored this year. Is it the quick release? Are they shooting better? Is it no body contact? What's going on? Well, let me first of all say, Bob, what it is, and it isn't that the goaltending isn't as good. No, now, you know not. that, no, right? <laughs> but I think it's a combination of those things. I think the European influence has opened the game up where it's much more wide open. Punch having a tough night. Uh, and like you say, the quick releases, the, the, the snapshots rather than the big wind-up and the slap shots is another uh, thing that I've noticed has changed. So telegraphing with that slap shot gives you, of course, a chance to set. Right? Exactly. And you see, people, uh, players think if they slap it, they can shoot from farther out. So consequently, it's not just the fact that they're slapping it, but usually they're trying to do it from outside the top of the circle, thinking they're going to blow it by the goalie. Now in the game today, forwards are realizing they've got to start making moves, get inside around those hash marks before they let it go. So you're seeing the puck on a pass. It's being released quicker, and it's being released in closer. Dornhofer had that quick release. <laughs> if I had eight seconds. It's four to nothing. The New York Islanders, a minute and a half left in the first period. Merrick in back of the leaf net. Gerlego tying him up, but Nystrom goes in to help against Salming. Now they get their skates on it. It comes loose for five. How it ran into him. Five again, and his pass goes all the way down the ice into the New York zone. No icing. Lorimer is back. He left it in the corner for McEwen. McEwen starting out. A pass ahead, nearly picked off by Durant. Slides down the ice. Down the icing. The crowd cheering as they announce the last minute of play in the period. We're going out to Edmonton again. We've got another goal out there. Let's have a look at this one. Now Jeff is over the line. A five straight on. And Orly is fifth. Here's Hockey. In on the right side. Well, it started right in the Oilers' zone. They intercepted a pass. Gretzky tipped it to Paul Coffey. What a beautiful play using the defenseman as a screen. And there's Bedlam in Edmonton. 2-0 oh. Oilers over the Canadians. Wow. Who would have believed it? Listen. The players believe it. I'm going to tell you something. I got a chance here. Now this is Turnbull. Took a shot. Knocked away. Comes across the line. That'll be offside if he goes back. And he does. I was going to say, Gary, 
If Edmonton wins tonight, that'll be three straight against Canadians. That has got to be the biggest upset in Stanley Cup play in Stanley Cup history. That's right, and the Oilers are getting an ovation right here at Maple Leaf Gardens, and I can say, Bob, that's something that the Flyers were never able to do, beat the Canadians in a series. Okay. They're an exciting team to watch, a lot of youth, and they're working. A Cinderella team in the making for Stanley Cup 81, the Edmonton Oilers, leading Canadians 2-0. Down on that left side. Right in front of Gilly. Scores! Carroll just rolled it in front. Gillies was there. Five to nothing. 25 seconds left in the first period. Can you believe it? There's the look of desperation by Coach Mike Nicoluck. What a play Carroll makes here. He waits for Gillies to get in position. Gillies doesn't handle the puck that well, but he steers it to his forehead, and all he does was slide it. And it gets right through the legs of Sierra. And boy, oh boy, we've got a wipeout here. The Islanders, five to nothing. 15 seconds left in the period. An embarrassing 5 nothing lead built up by the Islanders over the Toronto Maple Leafs in this third game of a best of five. Three seconds left in the period. And there goes the bell. The first period ends. And I'll tell you, Gary, it's got to be it's got to be tough to carry on your shoulders. Most difficult. You have to feel sorry for Sierra. But Dennis Potvin started all out of his own zone. Now let's watch Carroll. Another two-on-one break. Now, Shan, the only thing he could have done is turned around and faced both players, stay in the middle. Not able to do that, and just a little slide through the legs for the fifth goal. So it's five to nothing, New York, and here's David. Well, they could have saved some time, it appears, and made this a best of one series. The Islanders just running away from the Leafs in the first period. Leafs haven't had the first goal in any game thus far. In fact, uh, the Islanders have scored twice before the Leafs have hit the board in any of the games thus far. And here tonight, they've scored five times. Merrick, Bossy, Marini, McEwen, and Gillies. And the Islanders have two of those five goals on the power play. And so the score at the end of the first period, the New York Islanders five and the Leafs nothing. Okay, let's go. Uh... The Islanders had more goals than the Leafs had shots. The Islanders scored five times and the Leafs put only four shots at Billy Smith. Now we'd like to take you back to Thursday night. Highlights of the second night of playoff action, game number two in series involving Canadian teams. And of course, the one you're looking for here is Edmonton's second straight victory over the Montreal Canadiens. Playoff recap Thursday. Here in Montreal on Thursday night, Canadian fans were looking for their team to turn it around after losing 6-3 to the Oilers the night before and that surprising upset in game one. But such was not the case, and the Oilers won a 3-1 to one to take a stranglehold in the best of five. The Canadians did start the game in fine style. Young Andy Moog, again the starter for Edmonton in goal, kept them at bay with some excellent saves early in the hockey game. But then, as happened so often in game one, the Oilers forced the Canadians to cop up the puck, and Paul Coffey scored an unassisted goal at 5.24 in the first period, and that put a damper on the Canadians' attack. They had started pretty well, as I mentioned. Montreal tied the game in the first minute of play, second period, on a power play. Gaston Gingras scoring as the puck bounces through and into the Edmonton net. LaRouche and Robinson assisting, and the Canadians had tied the game. But that was going to be it for Montreal, a team that lost only once on home ice in the last four months of the regular season. They lost twice in two nights to the Oilers in the series. On an Edmonton power play, a few minutes later... It's Risto Siltanen firing it in high on the short side. Curry and Gretzky assisting, and that proved to be the winning goal. The Oilers held on to their 2-1 lead through until late in the game. The Canadians ended up with 41 shots on goal. This was the one that put it away as Larry Robinson loses the puck at center ice, and Callaghan and Gretzky combine to set up Curry, who's home free from the blue line in, and he scores his third in two games, beating Sevigny high into the corner, so the Oilers win it and take a 2-0 lead over the Canadians. 3-1 Edmonton final score at the Montreal Forum. It wasn't quite as decisive, but the New York Islanders registered another matter-of-fact victory over the Toronto Maple Leafs by a score of 5-1 to, to take a two-game lead in this series. 
Heading for game three at Maple Leaf Gardens, the first period was scoreless and dull, but when the Islanders struck in the second period, they struck quickly. David Shan put a puck right on Mike Bossy's stick, and the Islanders' star right winger, who had two goals in the opening game, moved in and ripped one past Michelle LaRock. The goal that got the Islanders started on the way to another relatively easy victory. Less than a minute later, Bossy had a hand in Brian Trache's third goal of the playoffs and his first of three in this second game. Trache allowed to walk in from the corner to split the puck to the far side and beat Bunny LaRock. And then in the final minute of the second period, Trache, after taking a pass from Bossy, scores his second goal of the game, and the Islanders are comfortably in front, 3-0 at the end of two periods of play. In the third period, the teams traded goals, and then it was left to Trache to complete his hat trick after winning a faceoff, he got a bossy rebound, and the Islanders had their 5-1 victory, their second win in this best of five series. This is Dave Hodge reporting from Long Island. Well, there are no secrets to why the Islanders are dominating this game and this series. It's all right there for you to see if you watch the first period, but there might be some things you don't know about how we're doing the telecast. And so we will go behind the scenes and show you some of what goes on to get these games to your home. Islanders 5, Toronto nothing. Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment. Uh, rather, David and Howie are now between items 3 and 4. So like a 3A. One comes from court, Audrey. Okay. Yeah, here. Well, you really got to hustle to get something for Howie. Oh, no, there's not a whole bunch of time there. Double comes from court. There's, there's got to be thousands and thousands of feet of cable. These are monitors, and each monitor here has a different camera feed. Uh, you're in constant contact with the director. Okay, well, we start off around 10 o'clock, and uh, around 10.30, the trucks uh, move in, and uh, they park themselves here. And uh, we come in and uh, pull the... Um, power cables out from inside this little room here and hook up the truck with it. The switcher has a rundown of all the numbers of where uh, each cable goes into in the termination panel. Also the audio man has a rundown of all the uh, numbers of where the um, cables go to uh, for intercom and for sound inside the gardens and um, in the studios. At the other end of this um, video uh, harness goes to the isolation truck this truck is the isolated mobile, we call it. Different feeds, different camera signals, other than what's mostly on the air while you're actually watching the game come into here. And different tape machines and slow motion machines record those feeds. It's a coordinating point for, for those signals. So while the person at home is watching uh, the wide shot, the uh, other cameras are being recorded via these machines here to get a different perspective. The whole unit's probably 160,000 round figures. And that's for one camera and one lens and the accessory parts. And we operate uh, five hard cameras here on the gardens for Hockey Night in Canada, plus one, sometimes two handhelds. I shoot uh, guys fight, fighting, lingering shots of people hitting in the corners, penalties, uh, coaches, players skating on, players skating off. The camera is basically used as close-ups, the main camera being up there in the next section. Uh, camera two is the um, what they call the cover shot on the hockey night in Canada show. And its uh, duty is to follow the play um, in order to get all of the action in at all times, not miss any goals or any of the action, but still uh, give us an exciting uh, view of the game as you can possibly do from this angle. Uh, you're in constant contact with the director. The director is uh, in, uh, in charge of the production from the uh, directing point of view. Uh, the producer produces the show, but the director calls the shots. But uh, the total product has to be teamwork, and we strive uh, very diligently to achieve that. We have up here as the top is Montreal feed, and yeah. switch over to the Calgary game. So we get all the feeds in it, so I can watch them all. That's how it works. Red, 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 red. Each chance. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. 
four, Green is on the opening, okay? Get a back up. How the space shuttle should work so smoothly. We'll uh, return with the Stanley Cup playoffs in just a moment. Five to nothing. The New York Islanders play just underway in the second period. The Leafs bring it right in on top of Billy Smith. But the Islanders cover it up and clear it down the ice. Here's Salming. Bringing it down again. Salming shoots it in. Back of the net. Smith tipped it to Pearson. He was bumped in there by Terry Martin and falls to the ice. It comes to Sittler. Howitt intercepted Sittler's pass. Gary Howitt fired one high on the glass and went over the boards into the crowd over there near the Leaf bench. You look at Gary Howitt, but the Leafs have made a goaltending change. In goal now is Paul Harrison, who was called up from Dallas. And he'll play next the remainder. Merrick, Bossy, Marini, McEwen, and Gillies. New York out shooting Toronto 14 to 4 and out scoring them 5 to nothing. A reminder in our second intermission tonight, we'll be going to Edmund, Edmonton to have a look at that Canadian Edmonton Oilers game. We'll feature Edmonton in our second intermission tonight. Turnbull, let it slide along the boards. That gives Merrick a chance. Merrick in the corner. He Holds it with a skate. It's loose. Howitt didn't see it. Merrick does. Merrick gets set. Back here to Potvin. He can't find it. He did get it in time to shoot it back of the net, but was in great position to get a shot on Harrison. Potvin from center right. Now he shoots a high one in. Turnbull takes it down off the glass and goes back of the net. Up on the left wing. This is Martin getting the center. Sittler trailing. Martin chasing it. He's going in. Morrow. Morrow got it away from Sittler. Now Morrow again. Feeds it right to Paymon of the leap. Back of the net. There's Sittler trying the shot from a sharp angle. That's Anderson. He was bumped by Morrow. Anderson hooked it loose. Gets it back to Sittler. And he had it knocked away. Back of the net again. Anderson taking a look at the line. There it is with Salmi. He gave it to Anderson. The shot by Anderson is tipped over the glass into the crowd. Five nothing, New York. There's Paul Harrison. He led the league in the Central Professional League. There's his goals against average. Actually came up as a replacement because Bunny LaRock had the rib problem in the game number two. And Sira, even though he allowed five goals, I don't think really could be faulted. But Harrison is in the nets now for the Leafs. Watching the game, you realize that the Islanders are going to have to back off. I, I don't think the Leafs can do anything to really turn this around. It's going to be up to the Islanders to back off, give some daylight to the Leafs. Turnbull's weak shot stop at the far side. Marini throws it out to Carroll. Broken up by Melrose. Zanussi couldn't stop that pass. McEwen in front of the net to Gillies. Good passing by the Islanders as they come out again. And Gillies carries it. Gillies doing a great job. Nearly went in. And it's knocked away by Melrose to Lorimer at center. He backhands it in. Islanders got back on the side in time. Zanussi. Pass to center. Boschman feeds it ahead to Anderson. Took a weak shot. The rebound to Zanussi. Rightfully. Missing the short side. A great scoring opportunity for Zanussi. Didn't come near the net with it. Carroll goes in for New York. He flipped it in back of the net. Harrison stopped that. And Zanussi comes out to the line. Gets to center. Zanussi up near the Islanders line. Got in front. Got a check as he was going through. Put him off balance. And Bourne brings it right back. Bob Bourne shoots it in for New York. Back of the net. Harrison again. Left there to Bourne. Took the shot. Deflected wide of the net. Here's Zanussi. He cleared it out over the line. Hickey didn't see it. Now he does. And he shoots it in wide. Bourne picks it up. The Leafs are changing as the play goes on. Langevin on this left side. Gets a pass to the line at center. 
Now the Islanders with Bossy. Dipsy doodling of a center ice area. Tried to hit Cloutier and went down the ice. Icing called against New York. From Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, this is Stanley Cup 81. Well, Mike McBuck, you know, when he took over here, he went to bat for these guys, and I don't think they're really repaying them with the type of hockey that they're playing out there. And it's unfortunate that you only speculate that there'll be a lot of changes next year here in Maple Leaf Gardens. Balming shot, he broke his stick with it. Keller dumped it out to center ice. Scoring is stopped by Salming. Now Salming near his own line, having difficulty against Goring. Hickey played it over here to Robert, but he was outside, and that was called. Well, it's a sad evening, up to this point anyway, as you look at King Clancy and Harold Ballard. What do you do next? And there's Punch and Black upstairs. Down here behind the bench, Mike Nicolak. Tough going, Chico. You know, you don't realize it's tough on everybody. You even get sick to your stomach, Bob, when it gets this bad. And it looks like the fans, the players, everybody punch Harold. It's tough on everybody. Stanley, tough playoff game. And the Leafs down in the series, two games. And down in the second period, five to nothing. Solving back of the net. Picking up some speed. Gets a pass to Robert. He has been rather ineffective on that right side. Robert gets it again. Loses it. Knocked away by Keller into the center ice area. And Salming has it. Now the Islanders will be in for checking. That's Butch Goring, number 91. The pass to Robert. Couldn't hang on to it. Having a tough time, Gary. He's not alone. He isn't alone. You know, the, the worst part is that it's the whole summer that you have to think about that. You know, there isn't any athlete that likes to be humiliated, and that's happened for three games with the Leafs. And that's it. And everybody knows frustration, and that just causes you to do things you don't normally do. Say you're sitting on the bench, Gary. You say, okay, line mates, let's go out there. Let's have a good shift. You go out there. Things don't work. You get more frustrated. You keep trying, but pretty soon it just wears you down. Then you try to do somebody else's job, you know, oh. help out, and... Snowball. Langevin behind the net for New York. Leads it to Pearson. He didn't see it. Nystrom slides it out to Howitt. To Nystrom. And to Merrick. He nearly broke in all alone again. But he was offside, and that was close at the Maple Leaf Blue Line. That line, Merrick, the center iceman, they have done a tremendous job checking. The Islanders have two lines that can really score and then this here checking unit Nystrom, Howitt and Merrick that have just shut down the Leafs Islanders 5 Toronto nothing I'm Bob Cole with Gary Dornhofer and Chico Rich in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens here in Toronto the Leafs fighting to stay alive Huck comes in front of the net on that shot by five but they're all but gone Against the team like the Islanders, five goal lead. Oh, that's Harrison. He took over here in the second period for Yuri Serra. Leafs will be called for icing now as Pearson goes back. There it is. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. They played 6:08 of the second period. So far, nothing for the Leaf fans to cheer about. They've been shut out by the New York Islanders. We're coming up to the halfway point of a regulation game. I don't use that. Even, even though it's wide open at this point on the score. But it's playoff hockey. You never do know, do you? Juris. He dropped into Salming. Here comes Boria Salming. In on the wing goes Settler. He couldn't pick it up. Morrow has it now for New York, and Gillies will bring it out. Gillies and Carroll go to center. Down on the wing it goes, but it was broken up before Keller could get near it. They were offside again. Well, we've noticed even the passes that the Leafs make. They hit the stick, they bounce off the stick, they're 10 feet in front. There isn't anything that's going right for them, but 
You got to give a lot of credit to the Islanders. They have worked hard and they deserve everything they've gotten so far. That expression on Turnbull's face says it all. During the seven minute mark of the second period, the Leafs coming out again, but Dennis Potvin is there, pushed them right back inside their own line. Juris to Martin, Gillies bumped him. Right near the Islander bench, Potvin has it, leads it ahead. That's broken up. Here's Settler trying it, and he gave it away to Keller. Juris didn't wait for his mates to come out. Offside is called on the Islander blue line. This is Hockey Night in Canada from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. 12.48 remaining in the second period. The New York Islanders lead five to nothing. All the scoring in the first period. Merrick at 8.58. Bossy a power play goal at 12.05. Marini at 14.03. McEwen a power play goal at 17.40. And Gillies at 19.35. Jerry Gauthier, the linesman, had to go to the officials' room. Guess what, Gary? The whistle room. Yeah. Maybe he swallowed it. We always tell him. <laughs> Ask him. Maybe yeah. them some nights to swallow it. They don't do it. <laughs> Lorimer, Barbasi, Anderson keeping it in. Not for long, though. It's out over the line. Pache checked him. Now Bossy, great moves by Bossy. Born is with him. Bossy up across the line. He falls. And the puck slides in behind the net. Harrison taking Born out of the play. There's Harrison dumping it out. Getting it up near the line. And Shan brings it to center with Zanussi. To Shan. That's onside. Happy enough about it all? <laughs> we were all waiting for somebody to make a comment. I'm glad you did, Bob. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I like the position the Islanders in. You know, they just sit back and, and watch things happen. They know the Leafs have to open up, and they'll just add to that total. Juris shoots it in. Solving near the blue line. Took a swipe at it. Hickey got in front, but the Islanders... As always, they're back covering up Gillies now. He just threw it off to the left side to Goring, and he was stopped near center ice. Solming had some trouble. He lost it. Butch Goring knocked it back inside the leaf line. Gillies for checking. Now Duras up to Hickey. Off his skates and slides down into the New York zone. They're nearing the nine-minute mark of the second period, and here's Goring coming out again. Keller didn't see the pass. It was behind him. And Boudreaux takes over in the lead zone with Salming. Salming out across the line. Hitting center. Flipped the high one in wide. Nice from his back. And there's Langevin. You notice Chico and Gary that the Islanders are forever alert. They're always back. As if they're protecting that shutout. And that's the way they want it to stay. It's called discipline. Here's Boudreaux. You see, he's knocked off the puck. Looks easy, doesn't it, Chico? Well, when things are going well, it is easy. And when things aren't going well, it's awful tough. And that's what the Leafs are up against right now. Loney tipped it out to center. Derlego shoots it in. Here comes five. But out of the net, Billy Smith. Now Derlego feeds it over behind Maloney. And Morrill got his pass out across the line. There's nice from going in with Howard. The shot kicked out by Harrison. And the Leafs. Spurred on by that save. Come right back. Gerlego picking the shot. And Nystrom took it away. Nystrom to Merrick. Howard on the left wing. Coming in. The pass to Howard. In too deep. He can't shoot it. Pile in on the boards. It's cleared, though, into the center ice area. Five got back. Dennis Potvin and Morrow to Nystrom. He backhands it in. Melrose goes back to the net. The Islanders wholesale changes. As the play continues to center at the halfway mark of the second period, five to nothing, New York. Now then, Bossy's pass to Bourne all alone. Harrison made a great save on Bourne. Got shut out of hockey going. Icing called against Toronto. With a score of the New York Islanders, five. Toronto, nothing. This is Stanley Cup 81.
first. Nine minutes, 43 seconds left in the second period. And you know, it's very difficult for a defenseman to stop a winger that's in full flight. Bobby Bourne. And I, it looked like Bourne had his head down. That's when Harrison made the move to try to come out and take that goal away. Islanders on the offensive again. Trottier centered it. Bourne couldn't get a shot by Sittler. Kept in by Lorimer. Back of the net is Bourne. So is Sittler. And Sittler comes up with it. Lost it, though, right in front. As Trotsky knocked down his pass. Now solving for Daryl Sittler to the line at center. McEwen had Paymont covered. Trotsky shoots it back in. Now solving. Coming out. Paymont missed the pass. Slides inside the New York line. And McEwen turning with it. Up near center ice. Gillies breaking in. Gillies in a race with Duras. Duras knocked to the ice by Clark Gillies. And the Leafs recover. Coming out is Salming with Sittler and Paymon. Salming up over the line, but Will Paymon anticipating that Salming would shoot it in. You see Salming disgusted. He was offside, Paymon was. 8.49 left of the second period. Islanders building up a big lead in the first period and coasting now. Five to nothing. Winning the first two games in New York. And this third game here tonight. Should do it for the Islanders. Defending Stanley Cup champions. Here they come again. Goring's pass down on the far side. Marini trapped along the boards. And the Leafs turn. Boschman. He shoots one from center. Zanussi went in, but the Islanders were back again. And Gillies has it. Along the boards to Goring. Marini tipped it down the ice. And Melrose for Toronto. A pass ahead. Zanussi in with Boschman. And again, they're outside at the New York blue line. 8-10 left in the second period. The Islanders 5. Toronto Maple Leafs nothing. I'm Bob Kroll with Gary Dornhofer and Chico Resch in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens. Islanders, Chico, are going to be tough to beat. Well, if they play this well, and that is a big factor. The Leafs, sure, things haven't gone well, but they didn't fight so hard to get in the playoffs to play like this. They ran against a hot team, and they ran against a situation where nothing has gone right for them. So let's give them a little bit of credit, and hopefully if they can get one goal, just something, to, some excitement, something positive. Just uh, hasn't happened the whole series. Nystrom goes in looking for it against Juris. Back of the net is Howard. He took a check from Zanussi to tough customers there. A pass knocked down. Langevin took a shot. It was a good save by Harrison, let me tell you. Picking out that right leg. A good shot from the blue line. And Harrison stops it. Now Boschman up the center. Decides to shoot it in. The Islanders will pick it up back of the net. Pearson lost it. It comes this way to Howitt. Howitt overskated it, went back for it, gave it to Pearson again. Out to Merrick. Merrick's pass stopped at the leaf blue line. Juris just fed it ahead. Now Salming weaves his way through center. Salming shot. It's a good shot. Just missed the net on the stick side of Billy's. Right in front, it down. And took it away from Hickey. A great scoring opportunity for Hickey of the Leafs. And it's icing now called against New York. Hockey night in Canada will continue in a moment. 7.01 remaining in the second period. New York Islanders 5. Toronto Maple Leafs no score. Boudreaux. Paul, as he got the draw, Robert flipped the shot. It's over the glass into the crowd. Well, the Oilers again taking it to the Canadians. Watch Gretzky here. Oh, boy, isn't that pretty to watch. 3-0 Oilers. Boy, wonder does it. But the Canadians, they don't die hard or easy. They came back with Brian Ingram slipping the, pass, the puck pass Andy Moe. So it's 3-1 now in the second period. And perhaps that goal by the Canadians can get them going. 
You see that move by Gretzky? Oh, Chico jumped in his seat right here looking at it on the monitor. Yeah, I couldn't stop it either, even from here. I know you could. Gretzky gets going like that. He's marvelous. Just nine, marvelous. Nine points for him already in the playoffs. Vicky got in over the line and dropped it back. Robert cutting in. Couldn't center it. Harold trying to knock it out to center. It comes there anyway. Bossy going in with Trotsky. Centered it. They score. That's what you call making it look easy. Bossy faked it. Faked it again. Then gave it to Trotsky. But you know, Bob, it helps when you have a guy like Potvin. He set that two-on-one break again for his third assist. And it's all magic here with these two guys. Bossy just drew Turnbull and Harrison over to him and then just slipped it to Troche. And away they go. But there's good puck control and really working together as a team. Absolutely beautifully played. Actually, Harrison almost got his glove on it. Brian just about missed it. Uh, again, uh, you know, nothing's going right for the Leafs. And that really wasn't that great a two-on-one. Bossy got in a little deep. But they're turning bad plays into goals, and the Leafs are turning good scoring chances into nothing, and that's been the story. But it's amazing how long uh, Bossy can hang on that puck, wait and wait, and then just turn the trick. It's six to nothing now. The Islanders solving shot right in front of the Solving on the blue line. Something to cheer about. Long way to go, but Salming to Ricky Five. He made the pass to Salming, and Billy Smith goes down, and Five has an easy time of it. This is what we were talking about again, you know. Corey Salming could really blast us, but no, just a nice, easy pass. Ricky Five picks it up, walks across, and dumps it in. You know, that's one of the few times that the Islanders, after a guy makes a pass, failed to take him out of the play. They let Vibe get back in the play, and he got the return pass. Well, the Leafs are on the board. And the Islanders, Goring coming in. Shot was tipped right to the doorstep of Harrison. He hangs on to it. I'd like to say one thing. We saw... Uh... We'll get that in a moment. Chico live from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, the Stanley Cup playoffs. 5.59. Chico, you were about to say something. Again, we're going to have to wait for a sec. Okay, here it's dropped in, and Salmi takes it. Back to the net. Off the boards to center. Lorimer shoots it in. And hits Salmi. Salmi knocked it back down the ice. 6-1 the score. New York on top of Toronto. Salmi a good move. Beating Lorimer. Pass to the net. Oh, that's offside, Chico. You're on. I was just going to say, watching the replay uh, with Wayne Gretzky scoring and then Mike Bossy hanging on to the puck and passing it over to Brian Trotje for an easy goal. And Gary saying how amazing it was that he hung on to the uh, puck. i just like to say, as a goaltender, I find that good goal scorers do that. They don't force things. Don't panic. No, and they just wait and wait. Eventually, somebody will make a mistake. Well, Lindy Ruff has scored. That is now in the second period, and the Sabres... Look like they're on the way to the next round. Quarterfinals beginning on all fronts next Thursday. Here's Howitt coming in. Back of the net. Merrick dumped it out to the line. Pearson keeping it in. And Shan tipped it ahead. Fight started down in front of Paul Harrison. Howitt and Melrose going at it. Gary Melrose has been aggressive this whole playoff, and he's he's obviously not letting up even now. He's had some tough assignments coming down his side. He's had Clark Gillies the other night in New York. Now Gary Howitt. I'll tell you, they're really going at it. I think the officials are about to go in now. All the players are standing back. Now they're ordered in by Bruce Hood, the referee. They wait for them to tire themselves out. Then they go in there. And that takes a lot out of you. But Nell Rose, I admire his spunk. I mean, he's played hard in every game. He's hit people out there. And 
Gary Howitt. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Al Arbor behind the New York bench, obviously quite satisfied. Howitt and Melrose will get major penalties undoubtedly here at 1448 of the second period. Melrose has gone to the Leaf Clinic. He hurt his hand. It's been happening a lot now with helmets. They were going to see it on the replay, the fighting in front of the net again. And Barry Melrose doing a good job there, a real good job. Get a stick up a little bit there. Oh, quick right by Gary Howitt. But uh, a lot of times it looks like you win the fight, but you lose because the guy, one guy's hitting the other guy in a helmet, and you know what that's like, Gary. There's the injured goaltender, Bunny LaRock. Rib injuries suffered in New York. Minors and majors were handed out to Howitt and Melrose. Langevin for New York. Tonight's trim to Merrick. Coming up is Carroll. Play goes into the corner to the right of Harrison. Turnbull behind the net for Toronto. Look out. Well, Pearson went off balance. He couldn't believe it. The pass was coming right to him. Couldn't back up. And Ice now called against the New York Islanders. New York 6, Toronto 1. I'm Bob Cole with Gary Dornhofer and Chico Resch in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens here in Toronto with only 4.43 left in the second period. And in our second intermission, we'll be featuring the Edmonton Oilers. Well, then, the North Stars are trying to wrap it up tonight at home. They got goals from Palmer, McAdam, and Cicerelli. They lead the Bruins 3-0. There's a quick shot by Paymont right on, and Smith blocked it. Bossy poked it back to Potvin. Morrow has it. Laid it to center ice. Bache spun around by Juris. Kicked it loose. Bourne trying to go in. Bossy was free in front. And he got that pass into him. 420 left in the period. Martin comes back in. Morrow carries him in on the board. And now Bob Bourne. He's stopped by Salming. Can't move it. Sittler got it loose. Into the corner. Back to Paymont. He took the shot. Deflected away wide. Morrow knocking it to the line. And out. This is Bourne. Pache. Bossy catching up. Bullet shot. And he didn't hit the net with it. Islanders keep it in. Martin has a chance. He didn't see it. And Bourne carries on. Now Martin swiped it away from him and knocked it out to center. Morrow shoots it back in. 3.40 left in the period. Solving fall. Nothing is going right. Sittler missed the long pass. Dennis Potvin. To the line to Goring. Paymont stealing it for Toronto. Shoots it in. The Leafs are changing now. As the Islanders go back for it. Mark Gilly decides to shoot it down the ice. This is going to be icing. No, they wave it off. Chan. Pass to Zanussi. Up to center to Boschman. Anderson goes in front of the net, but it stopped along the board. There's been a whistle this time. Five of them there. You know, when you watch the Islander defense, they have played the man so well. Very rarely have the Leafs been able to beat an Islander defenseman one-on-one. -on -one. Just making contact, riding the guy out of the play. A score. They're tied in Madison Square Garden. Hardy and Taylor have scored for the Kings. Don Maloney and Barry Beck have scored for the Rangers. That one is tied in the second period in Pittsburgh. Sutter, Babich, and Klassen for St. Louis. Johnson with two, and Ferguson have scored for Pittsburgh. 3.04 left of the second period here, and it's 6-1. to one, The New York Islanders. McEwen to Goring. The pass goes down. Marini carrying in. Marini got a stick on it. Battles Anderson for the puck. Now Gillies back to the blue line. Over here. To Goring. He let it slide by Shan. And Boschman backhands it down to the New York blue line. Marini went after Turnbull. Here's Anderson. Anderson can't get on the skates to get the shot away. He was off balance. Nearly fell. The Islanders bring it back. Goring up to center ice. Over the line is Goring, and the shot stopped by Harrison. 
Jan picking it up from Harrison with 2.20 to play in the second period. Sanusi made it into the New York zone. Leafs changing again. The Islanders Pearson coming out. Gets to the blue line. The right wing pass to Merrick. In with Nystrom. Merrick going in with Carroll. Carroll right in. And the weak shot of the short side stopped by Harrison. Leafs can't move it out. Comes out anyway. Merrick brings it back to Langevin. Up it goes to Carroll. Merrick is with him. Here's Merrick shooting. Waited too long and Salming deflected it. Nystrom whipped it back to the net to Carroll. Carroll kicked it out front again. Lost his stick. Still with it. Salming ran into him. Boudreaux tries to knock it loose. Nystrom has a chance to move it. Nystrom left it there in the big circle to the right of Harrison. And the Leafs get it down the ice. Langevin is coming back with a minute and a half left of the period. Robert went after him. And they hold it. Now get a whistle and a faceoff coming up in the New York zone. Now I just want to make a correction on the goal scoring in the Pittsburgh game. Johnson does not have two. He has one. Shutt has the other and Ferguson. That score is tied at three. Okay. Here it's six to one. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Trailing the New York Islanders. Islanders built up a 5-0 lead in the first period. Merrick, Bossy, Marini, McEwen, and Gillies. Troche, the sixth Islander goal. Five scored for the Leafs at 13-53. Oh, if it's any consolation, the Leafs are tied with the Islanders in this period. They've each scored a goal. 1-15 left of the period. Pace goes to the right side, looks for the pass, and gets it, can handle it though, racing Turnbull, Pace going right in, in back of the net, Turnbull still after it, Pace going in to help, sets it up for Ford, but it was tipped up, come on third in the second period, Bob Bourne, flip one back in, and it's Turnbull, it's called, They'll bring it back out near the center ice red line, the second period winding down, just 52 seconds left. You know, just jumping ahead. If the Oilers win, they will face this team right here, the New York Islanders. Chico, should Edmonton win and the Islanders win this game? Looks much that way now, at least this game. How will they do against New York? Well, I think they'll do very well. Of course, Pittsburgh has to uh, lose also. That's right. If Pittsburgh wins, then the Islanders will face Pittsburgh, who they've had a lot of trouble with. But Edmonton, we played them with Colorado the, right near the end of the season, and they were sharp. We thought we should have beat them, and uh, they got they still got four goals, but two games before that and two games after, they scored like seven goals a game. So, you know, they they not only can score, but now they've proven in this series they can play defense. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about Pittsburgh. They're yeah. still in the hunt. The two coaches... Good night for this man, and a long night for Mike Nicoluk. Well, he had mentioned after about a month of uh, coaching here in Toronto that you get to find out a lot about the character of your hockey club. Five nearly set it up in front. The Islanders bringing it down again. The pass comes over here to Bourne. Bossy waits on the other side, but five has it. 20 seconds left to Der Lego. Lego from center tries the shot on Billy Smith. No problem. Five. He can't shoot it. Here's Maloney digging for it. Nine seconds left in the period. Prace will run out the clock in behind the goal. Three seconds left. And the bell goes to end the second period with the New York Islanders and the Toronto Maple Leafs each getting one goal in that period. But five for the Islanders in the first, and it's New York six, Toronto one. And here's David. Brian Trache made it six to nothing for the Islanders with his sixth goal of this series. And then the Leafs finally scored Rick Vive from Salming and Duras as yet. Daryl Sittler is pointless in this series, and so is Will Fama. Islanders apparently only 20 minutes away from going to the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. We are just a few seconds away from taking you to Edmonton. We would like to uh, see what's happening with the Oilers in front by a score of 3-1. to one. From the faceoff, La Riviere. Behind the net, four checking number six, that's Mondew. 
Three to one, the Oilers leading the Canadians in the second period. Here's Weir. Over the line. To the other side. Hockey shoots it. Shoots his front. Canadian laying it out. Here's shot. Shot over the line. Hurt shot. Now the shot. Shot. is trying to get it. After he had given move. A lot of trouble with the initial shot. Is that the break the Canadians will need to get them going again? Three to two the score now. Well, a break it was, Dick. I'll tell you. <laughs> It's a real funny goal. Steve Shutt just took a swipe at the puck in midair. Uh, Moog had made the, made the original save, and it was flying into the corner. Shutt just took a swipe at it, and Andy Moog, really no time to get back in position. But uh, a goal they probably shouldn't have scored, but a big goal for the Canadians. Puts them right back in the hockey game. Unassisted shot at 15-33. Now the order's coming by. Hunter. Take Bondu in on the board. It's a close one again, three to two, the one goal separating them. And some indication just after that play started, when the score was three two, that they may start to. We will be going back to Edmonton shortly as we return to the Stanley Cup playoffs in just a moment. Here in Toronto, the Islanders six and the Leafs one at the end of two periods of play. We want to send you right back now to Edmonton. Danny Gallivan, Dick Irvin, and Mickey Redmond, where the Habs have closed within a goal of the Oilers. It's 3-2 Edmonton late second period. 127 left in the second period. 3-2 Edmonton leading Montreal. I'm Dick Irvin along with Danny Gallivan, Mickey Redmond, and John Wells here at the Northland Coliseum. They have never seen the home team win a playoff game in this building. They were eliminated last year. Talk about NHL playoffs. They were eliminated last year by Philadelphia in three straight. Game three went into overtime. I think it was double overtime before they finally... 26 uh, minutes and 13 seconds of Aiken Linsman score. Well, right now, it's three to two. Edmonton in front. They led three to nothing at one time. The Canadians have come back. And it moves within the one goal. Now it's Napier. Napier. He's going right in on goal. He shoots. Well, that was the wrong guy to lose the puck to and give it a breakaway. There you'll see what happens at center ice. Mark Napier, the last man back for the Canadian, right there. And Wayne Gretzky, a free ticket all the way in on Chevigny. The deke to the forehand, and bingo, 4-2 to two Edmonton. We'll keep you posted as the Oilers are just uh, one period and a little bit away from going to the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. The same position the Islanders see themselves in, and of course it is possible, though not definite, that if the, both the Oilers and the Islanders win, they would play each other. The Pittsburgh-St. Louis series determines that. It would be interesting, to say the least, to see Wayne Gretzky and Brian Trache face off against each other. Now let's go for the third period here at the Gardens to Bob Cole, Chico Resch, and Gary Dornhoff. Thank you, Dave. It's the New York Islanders, six, Toronto Maple Leafs, one. Merrick, Bossy, Marini, McEwen, Gillies in the first period for New York. And in that second period, Trottier his sixth and five at 13.53. The only goal for the Leafs. The shots, Toronto nine, Islanders eight in that second period. Well, one 20-minute period to go, Chico, and uh, that's all for the Leafs, unless some kind of a miracle can happen here. Yeah, they're going to obviously have to get goals soon and quick and get some breaks and uh, down five Gary you're sitting in the dressing room and you kind of know that hey there really isn't much of a way and you go out there you're hoping something's going to happen you're trying to really take care of really your own position not try and look too bad I know as a goalie I'm saying they got six please I just want to get out of here with six I'm not worried about winning at that stage well there's no way the Islanders are, are going to lose this one they have a disciplined hockey club they have a talented hockey club but uh, defensively, they are very sound, and uh, they've showed it in three games, and I don't expect them to go in the tank in this last period. 
And if the Leafs do have a weakness, Gary, it's got to be what you just mentioned, defense. Well, a combination. Well, defensively, they're having trouble, but you just watch the way the Leafs check and the way the Islanders check. The Leafs use a stick to check. The Islanders get involved and actually physically take the man out of the play. Kache left it for Pearson. He got it to center, handed back to him. Now he lifts a high one end to the right of Harrison. Solving in there against Trottier. The Leafs come out, led by Derlego. Maloney on this side. It goes the other way to five. His wicked shot was just off the mark. Maloney feeds it in front. Five again. Swinging and hitting it. But it was blocked. Now Trottier. A long, rising shot. Loved by Harrison. And the Leafs. Derlego from center ice. Shoots it in. The Maple Leafs are changing as they clear it down into the Islanders zone and Mary comes out with Nystrom the pass too far for Nystrom Turnbull goes back to the leaf net Sittler swinging to his left Turnbull goes through the middle to Martin up to center right Martin gets across the line they're offside Sittler on this left wing in ahead of the play well an update on the scores four to two that's uh, just waiting for the start of the third period Buffalo ahead four to one in the second period. That's over. Still no score in Quebec with Philadelphia. Long shot, Billy Smith, gloving it. Back of the net, hot man. Stick handling around the net again. He poked it in that corner. Now he comes to the line with a pass. Carroll just backhands it in. Nice from catching up the Turnbull. Bumps him on the board. Took him off the puck. He gets it back again, though. Hot man kept it in. Nystrom flipped it around the net. Harrison couldn't stop it. That's Merrick. Now he's bumped off the puck. Carroll comes in to help. Merrick nearly got loose. But Nystrom in front of the net. Chan poked it ahead. Came on, missed the pass. Get it hot back. And his own line is moral. Coming up to the two-minute mark of the third period. 6-1, the New York Islanders. In this, game three, and the Islanders up two games. Winning both at home, of course. Someone said the Islanders are especially good on the road. I think it was you, Chico. Especially what an understatement. Yeah, especially in Toronto. They love to play here. From Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, this is Stanley Cup 81. Bob Cole with Gary Dornhofer and Chico Resch in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. In what looks to be the last game of the season for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're trailing by five goals against this well-disciplined, powerful hockey club, the defending Stanley Cup champions, New York Islanders. Islanders keeping it in. His Carroll, his pass into the corner. Just back of the net. Gillies was tied up, couldn't move on it. Marini had a chance and couldn't get a pass away. Anderson got a pass down to Zanussi. He chopped it in behind the goal. And the Islanders get it to the line, not out. Boschman kept it in. Anderson after it, centers it. And Carroll was there. Dumped out to the center ice area. Juris feeds it back to Stalving, up to Anderson. Anderson lets it go from there. Trouble for Billy Smith from that angle. And that distance. That's Boudreaux centering it. Zanussi, another great chance for him. Didn't get good wood on the shot. And it went wide. Bourne up to center. He was bumped there by Melrose. Juris back to his own line. 320 gone in the third period. Six to one, New York. Now Melrose shoots it in. Lorimer on the boards with it. The Islanders Trotche to center. Couldn't go by Shan, but Bossy gets it up to him. Trotche going in. Bossy in front of the net, waiting for it. Goes to Bourne. Bossy in behind the net. Shan skated in front of him, allowing Robert to lose it right there inside the line. And now Shan up to Hickey. In with Boudreau. Boudreau gets set. Doesn't shoot it, centered it. And the Islanders are all bad. Bossy, a pass down to Bourne behind him. Melrose stopped him. Bossy shoots it in, and Bourne was offside. Well, we have an 
update on some of the other scores around the league. Calgary has added two more goals in that second period. Now lead four to two. And that could eliminate the Blackhawks. Two goals by the Rangers in the second period. Greshner and Johnstone for a 4-2 lead. And they're still tied in Pittsburgh. And Minnesota. Payne has scored the fourth goal. O'Connell has scored for Bruins to break the shutout. Islanders lead here 6-1. Coming up to the five-minute mark of the third period. Pearson lifts a high one in wide of the net. Eric went after it. He was bumped. And it's cleared out over the line with Hickey coming down. Hickey's pass in too far for Robert. Langevin just dumped it to center right. Shand has it. Shand's pass. Took near the line. It was called offside. Boudreaux was late coming up. Pat Hickey has not played in every game this series. Still suffering from that ankle injury. And Coach Nikoluk has shuffled the lines and the players in the three games. Looking ahead, Gary and Chico, who do you like for the finals? Two teams. You first, Gary. <laughs> well, I have to say the Islanders. I, I had picked Montreal to win the Stanley Cup this year, so <laughs> that may just be taken care of tonight. Well, like Vera says, it ain't over till it's over. That's right. Chico? I like the Islanders, and I, I like Buffalo. Scotty Bowman and uh, Nielsen and, and the group there is really getting them playing tight. I like Buffalo. Pearson dumped it back to the net. Interesting. Pearson coming out again. Nystrom stopped near center. I don't sell out on the Philadelphia Flyers yet, Gary. That's right. Juris goes back to the net. Juris poked at it. Howitt takes it away easily and then lost it. Here's Morrow coming in from the point for Nystrom. Back of the goal, away from Juris. Pulls his way to the corner. Nystrom taking a look now. Stick handling all over the place. Oh, shooting! And the save by Harrison. Great work by Nystrom, but they didn't touch it. That's right. That, that's the way it's been going for three games other than uh, Melrose on a few occasions. Here come the Islanders again. Nystrom coming to center. Shoots it in. Nystrom, the man who scored the overtime goal, won it all for the Islanders last year on the island. What an exciting moment that was. And there was a question. Can you remain hungry? I guess you can, Gary. You were on two in Philadelphia. You get hungry enough for the second one as well as the first. You certainly do. And Well, it's 6-1 to one here. If something drastic changes, we'll hold it for you and show you later. But right now, let's go to Edmonton. And he went back, shot off for Stickham. He's over in the air, and it's over the glass. Right now, we'd like to welcome the viewers in the southern Ontario region to our telecast of the Montreal Canadiens Edmonton Oilers game. My name is Dick Irvin. I'm with John Wells, Danny Gallowan, and Mickey Redmond. The teams have played two and a half minutes in the third period, and the Edmonton Oilers are leading the Montreal Canadiens 4-2. to two. Hagman, Coffey, and Wayne Gretzky with two goals, scoring for Edmonton, Brian Engblom, and Steve Shutt, scoring for Montreal. Canadians tottering on the brink of elimination. Fighting back here, trying to tie it up. But they're up against a tough, well-disciplined, well-coordinated hockey team led by that fellow there, Gretzky, over to Callaghan. Callaghan shooting it off the air above 70. Gretzky's been outstanding again tonight. For those of you who have just joined us, he has two goals and an assist. One of the very spectacular variety. There's a shot. Gretzky was there. Hit center. Gobbled up by Robinson. Robinson to the right side. Hands it off to Napier. Back to Robinson. Jammed into the plate. Right over the air. Into the corner they go. And they get a whistle for a face-off. To the left of the little guy. Moon. Little Mo, I call him. Danny, if you want to go back in history and you like to do that at playoff time, uh, the Canadians on the brink right here. The last time they were swept in the series, but they did not win at least one game in a playoff round. The finals of 1952. They lost four straight to Detroit. 
since then, they have always managed to win at least one game in a playoff round. And except for last year, they have always played best of seven rounds. They have never since then either lost the first three games of a series. So this is something new for the organization for a while anyway. Hicks goes in there, picks it up. He's seen chased by shot into the corner. The Siltonen moves away. There's LaFleur. It's the centering pass. And the Oilers start down on the next shot. Lovely over the line. Broken up. Angla left it down. And three minutes and 40 seconds. That time by in the third period. Four to two for Edmonton. They race out at center. Silverman clearing it in there. Here's Lovelay. It's knocked away. Englund. Over on the far side of the left wing is shot. He has it. Offside is Englund. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the North Lions Coliseum in Edmonton. Get a word to our Southern Ontario viewers if there's scoring action or something significant in that Toronto Islanders game. You will see it, but right now we feel this is the major story in the NHL right now with the Canadians trailing 4-2 third period. Now it's Anderson. A backhand long shot. Rambler over on the other side. Good move back. Who over to Hudson? And who has vacated that left wing? He was trailing in behind Hudson. He was up to going in. He passed it back. Down the ice it goes. Canadians are down by two goals, 4-2 for Edmonton. There's Coffee. And it was on full stick. Here's Messier clearing it down in the Canadian territory. Back there is Langway for checking Anderson along with Hagman. Hagman got the first goal of this hockey game. Coffee has won. Gretzky. He has two. Shot an Englund. From Montreal. Callaghan. Blast of Englund behind the net. Buzzing around are the Oilers. Canadians clear it out and it's down the ice. Back for it. Coffee. He plays it up to Curry. It's Callaghan. Gretzky's on the other side. The Curry. Pocket goes. Weisbrock clearing it behind the net for Robinson. Robinson starting out. Here's the native of Metcalf, Ontario. Clearing it in there. He jammed off the puck from behind the net. Ganey bumped for Riviere. Puck is cleared by Callaghan down the ice. Gretzky is out for Savard. Gretzky falling as Captain Savard into the center ice area. Last one, high and wide. Pick around the left for Edmonton. Up on the left side, off Hunter's stick. This could be icing if Savard touches it before Hunter. It is icing. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Northland Coliseum in Edmonton. Six to one, the New York Islanders. Once again... We'll be going to Edmonton. An update on the Islanders Canadian game. 10.59 left in this period. 6 1 New York. And now let's go to Edmonton. Montreal and the Oilers. All right, there he is now. Clearing it ahead. Hunter has it. Back it goes. Over the line is Lovely with Hicks. Lumley drops it back to Hicks. In for Lumley. Lumley puts it up. There's a penalty coming up to Langway. With the score, Edmonton 4, Montreal 2. This is Stanley Cup 81. Well, Rod Langway caught hooking Lumley here deep in the Canadian zone. Very bad time for a penalty for the Canadian Here's the hook. Lumley going down. The others were able to score here in this power play almost with Seal the fate of the Montreal Canadiens. Coffey shooting it in toward the corner. A lot of batters here. I know there's one over there. Jake is in, but we like our little thin 
<laughs> I guess that's Sippelman. Set to Lynn. Risto, Risto. Risto has been very popular here in Edmonton. Now behind the net. Cosby. Redskins moving up on one wing. Curry on the other. Now it's back on the left side. Jarvis will get into this. Hopefully he gets back there and takes over. Now he drops it into the center right there. Yeah. One on the line. There's... Back over the front. Back it comes. Coffey laying it in along the board. Callaghan into the corner to Curry. Back it comes to Coffey. Now, back over the board. Coffee takes it. Game oh, by 70. All that deflection came right in. Now the Oilers starting back on the left side. Coffee comes. The center, clearing it in. Back to comes to the line. shot from the line. Silkman took that shot, a rising shot, and the play is stopped. Well, you talk about the puck following a player around. You saw the Oilers with some pressure on the puck just moments ago before this shot by Silkman. Deflected off one of the players, bounced off a of Sevigny right on a Gretzky stick, and he banged it right off a Sevigny. I don't think Sevigny even saw it. Just hit him and went back into the corner, but just amazing how that puck seems to follow Wayne Gretzky around. So there are 17... 35 on the scoreboard. 17 is the number for Langway and 35. The remaining seconds in his penalty. Low is number four. Vogel is number two. They're out of your picture. They are on the point. Gainey struggling with Anderson. Into the corner goes Savard. Savard clearing it on the board. Jarvis plays it into the center ice area. Low back to the line to Vogelin. Oglin up on the right wing to center. Messier to Hagman. Back it comes. Falling inside the line was Anderson. The Oilers keep it in. Passed in front of the net and it's gobbled up by Gainey. Now the penalty has expired. A shot by Foglin is off the stick over the glass. Hockey net in Canada will continue in just a moment. Cole and Gary Dornhofer, Chico Resch in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Six to one, New York. The clock winding down on the Maple Leafs for this season. 7.41 left in the period, and we'll remind you that we'll be taking you back to Edmonton at the Northland Coliseum to show you some more of that game where the Oilers are on the threshold of eliminating the Montreal Canadiens. They're leading in the third period, four to two. Dan Maloney has just got a hooking penalty against Stefan Pearson. Watch to the left of your screen as Maloney comes in and Pearson does a little spin around. Maloney hooks him, so the Islanders and their power play has been devastating. Again, get that opportunity. This, these five guys are going to be very instrumental. The Islanders uh, repeat of the Stanley Cup. And these five are born Trottier, Bossy, Putman, and Pearson. Dynamite. Now your special teams, your power play and your penalty killing. Scotty Bowman says that's where hockey games are won. Power play. Killing penalties. Bossy is offside on this rush, and it's called. Now you talk about a pure goal scorer, but Let's look at what makes him such a good goal scorer. He certainly has the speed to get there. Anticipation. But he, anticipation gets himself in the clear and always is in a position to shoot the puck. And then when you have somebody like number 19, Troche, that gets you the puck, well, I think I could have scored 10 goals playing with Troche. I'm sure you could, Gary. 20. 30? Well, you're getting closer now, Robert. <laughs> 
Pearson for Trottier. He has to poke it back to him. Pearson went by Bourne to Potvin, and he comes to center. Potvin goes in on the left wing. It's dropped back near him. Five nearly poked it loose. Now Derlego has a chance. Down he goes with the shot. Deflected. Look out up there. It's into the crowd. We have our first final of the night. The Nordics have defeated the Philadelphia Flyers 2 to nothing. Flyers still lead the series 2 to 1. You're probably wondering why you haven't heard from Chico Resch. He's downstairs right now watching the Oilers game and get some comments along with Dave Hodge after the game. 7.02 left of this one. The Islanders, a five-goal lead on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Winning the first two games rather handily, rather handily, on the island in New York. And coasting now to the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. They're going to be tough to beat. Turnbull comes in. He has stopped. Putt fan. Goes back in his own zone. Left it there. Here come the Islanders. Full steam up. Pass went the other way. McEwen just tried to set it up on the wing. Now it's centered. Harrison has to be careful. Jams his pad on the post. And he holds it. Live from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. The Stanley Cup playoffs. 6.22 left in the third period. Pearson. Nears. Maple Leaf line, cleared it over to the side. McEwen turning around, got away from the check. Hook the shot, and Harrison made a big save, picking out the leg again. He's made two or three dandies. Slapped at the puck this time. He's in the hockey game. The Islanders have been able to beat him once. Sierra gave up five goals in the first. McEwen and Eistrom shot. Look at that. I'll tell you, he's hot. You know what, I think Harrison's trying to get himself in the picture as one of the top goaltenders for the Leafs. He has showed a lot of moxie out there and playing hard. But that's that's what you have to have on a hockey club. I don't care what the score is, you got to work to the very end. I mean, you owe it to the fans here, you owe it to your teammates. And Harrison is certainly battling. You know, the Leafs have won 11 Stanley Cups. This certainly has to be a measuring stick how far they have to come to again be a contender. 550 left to the third period. Gillies. At center ice dropping it back to Potvin. Morrow takes his pass. Gives it to Potvin again. Now Marini on this right wing with Carroll along with him. Cleared away but Gillies is in on it quickly. Now the Leafs come back out, led by Paymont. Up to center ice, Wolf Paymont coming in. Tried to go through the defense, and Morrow didn't want anything to do with that. Just took him right out of the play. Brady nearly broke loose. Knocked right back to the New York line, and Carroll from center. Nearly gave it away, recovered in time. Goes back to Morrow with it. Five minutes left in the third period. 6-1 New York. Look at them, throw it around, lining it up, finding the hole. That's pot bad, and they go for a change. Tip back out to center ice. Lorimer is back on. McEwen, he'll go back to Lorimer. There he is. Lorimer steps out over the line. Great position to play. They make their changes. They make their changes properly. They're just dumping it in now. They know they have this game well in hand. That's Robert. Over to Boudreau. He cuts for the net. Boudreau got a back. Trotje intercepted it. Got away from Hickey's check. Brian Trotje in back of the net. 4.15 left of the third period. The pass goes the other way. Here come the Islanders again. Bossy shoots one in. Harrison had that take a crazy hop. The window was right. Steered it off though, and Shan brings it back to center. Here's Shan getting away from McEwen. Shan going in. He nearly had Smith beaten on the short side. It comes right back in front. And Hickey is dumped as he left the shot go. Lorimer back out to center with 3.50 left. He played it in off the board. That's Melrose shooting it along the corner boards. It comes right out to the line. That long shot by Langevin to stop. Pearson at his own line to center ice. 
Nystrom left it for him beautifully. He stopped rolling in front. It hit Howard State. Just missed the open side with Harrison out of the net. 325 left. The lead shoot it down the ice. Comes bouncing out near the crease, but it's icing against Toronto. Well, we have a couple of characters that are watching the Oilers and Montreal Canadiens in our studio. Chico Resch. We saw Dave Hodge earlier with his tube skates on. Difficult time standing up. <laughs> Just trying to get even, David. And we will be we will be going back to Edmonton as soon as this game has been completed. 3.20 left of this one. And we're that far from sending you out to Edmonton where the Cinderella story is unfolding. The Edmonton Oilers leading the Montreal Canadiens 4-2 in the third game. Oilers winning twice at the Forum in Montreal. Threatening to wrap it up tonight. It's going to be a long plane ride back for the Canadiens should they lose this one. Maloney now up over the line for Toronto. Weak backhander. Langevin in on the board. Gallego holds him. No further play. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Three minutes left of this one. I'm Bob Cole with Gary Dornhofer. In the gondola, Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto with 6-1. to one. The New York Islanders over the Maple Leafs. Downstairs, getting boned up on the Edmonton game, Dave Hodge and Chico Resch. We'll be going to Edmonton right after this third period is over. Juris with 2.50 left. Up to the New York line with it. Knocked in by Durlego. Langevin takes it back to the net. Got away from Maloney's check. Then it hit Durlego and went over the glass down there into the crowd. 21 goals in three games, and this one is not over yet for the New York Islanders. That's prolific scoring. For a moment, let's go to Dave Hodge. The score remains the same in Edmonton. They have about seven minutes to play in the third period. Oilers four and the Canadians two. The Canadians have complained mildly about uh, some calls or non-calls by referee Ron Wicks, uh, who doesn't appear to be ready to call anything unless it is flagrant. The Oilers about seven minutes away from going to the quarterfinals, leading 4-2, and when this game is over, we will take you live to Edmonton. Okay, Dave, we'll stand by for that. For now, it's 2.39 left in this third period. Islanders scoring five times in the opening period. They got another in the second. The Leafs managed one. And here we are in the third at 6-1 to one, New York. A convincing win of the series, I'd say. Tipped in by Maloney near the net. But that's all. Carroll gets it out to Gillies. Down the ice it goes. Racing back is Juris against Marini. Hector Marini fighting for it in the corner. And Juris has it. Juris lead pass for Derlego. Maloney on the left wing. Solving, catching up. Maloney will shoot it. Put it right on. Billy Smith stopped it. Out of the net he goes. Look at Smith getting into the act now. He decides to have some fun. Got a pass away on the boards to Gilly. Gilly's coming down. Broken up by Duras. And 155 left in this hockey game. 150 left in the season for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Many frustrating moments. Player changes. Change in coaching. And Gary, I suppose there will be more changes in the summer months. You can count on it. Bourne is still at it for the Islanders. Turnbull took it from him. A minute and a half left. Zanussi coming out. Up the line. Zanussi up to center. Comes over on the swing. Hitting the line and getting in front. Pulled over as he took the shot. The defenseman standing right up there. There's a drive by Turnbull. A rebound! Boshman is stopped by Billy Smith with 1.13 left. Well, one of the few times that the Leafs have been able to stand in front and Boshman had a good opportunity but just couldn't flip the puck high. He'll gain that position in front of the net. The rebound will be there. 
But Smith hasn't had a lot of work. But uh, every once in a while, a goaltender likes to play forward, grab hold. See, nobody comes at him, so why not just hang on to it until they can get it to one of his players? That's the time somebody has to go at Smith and actually stand right beside him or move right into him. New York Islanders six, Toronto Maple Leafs one. They didn't do it fairly once more. They'll face it off to the right of Smith. Bruce Hood, the referee tonight. Wayne Bonney, Gerard Goche, the linesman. In complete control of the game. Hood, one of the veteran officiating referees in the league. Been around a long time. Last minute in the season for the Toronto Maple Leafs. How to Merrick. They'll kill the clock now if they can. Rolling it back to McEwen. 45 seconds left. Nystrom up to center ice. Nystrom comes up over the leaf line. Had it poked away by Duras. Nystrom goes back to the net with it. And he still has it. Centered it. The quick shot by Merrick in the leg. Islanders keep it in. Another drive wide. 30 seconds left in this one, folks. It comes out into the center ice area. That's Merrick leaving it. Nystrom continues on. 20 seconds left on the board. Bashman knocked it loose. It goes in back of the net. Harrison took the swipe at it. 10 seconds left. Paymont gets it to the line. This will be it, ladies and gentlemen, for 1981 for the Maple Leafs. At once, stopped by Billy Smith. And it's over. The New York Islanders have defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs convincing style, 6 to 1. And they'll be congratulated now by the Toronto Maple Leafs as they go on into the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. As is the case tonight, Bob, the Islanders drew all the stars as in game one and two. The first star was Dennis Potvin, the second star, Brian Troche, the third star, Bobby Nystrom. Good choices. So it's over, folks. We hope you've enjoyed the season. Gary, it's been great working this season here in Toronto with you. We know you'll be around some more in the playoffs. The Maple Leafs being congratulated now by the New York Islanders. Let's now go to Danny Gallivan and Dick Irvin, Mickey Redmond in Edmonton. Welcome our viewers in the Toronto area. Big story unfolding here. 3.40 left in the game. Regulation time and the Oilers lead the Canadians 4-2. Now Langway, he hits Mondu with it, Mondu winding up with his shot, and it's a cross ball. One move. So the time remaining, three minutes and 29 seconds, and this huge crowd of over 17,000 in that anticipatory mood, they think that the Oilers are about to eliminate the Canadians in three games. There you're going to see that thing. Danny, Andy Moe's father was a goaltender on the Penticton Bees in 1955 when they won the World Championship. Billy Warwick is up the game tonight. One of the legendary Warwick brothers from that era. I was chatting with uh, Ed Mio, the injured goaltender of the Edmonton Oilers after the second period, talking about young Moe coming into play, and he said, hey, all the better for the hockey club. You know, Mio's going to be back probably if they go on to another series. And he said, if he can do the job, more power to him. Yeah. to what you were talking about earlier if the Canadians could lose tonight and they're losing right now and if they are eliminated that would be the most ignominious setback for a Montreal Canadiens hockey team since what 1952 I think last time they were swept in the series when they failed to win at least one game and this coming in the wake of getting knocked out by Minnesota last year but the sting of defeat was born last year more admirably because the third of the down. Anderson couldn't quite catch up with the puck, unfortunately. And Messi, of course, was streaking down. He just dragged it over, just not more than a couple of inches behind the linesman right there to make the call. You couldn't hear the whistle, of course, for the crowd. Mark Messier turned 20 in January, just a few days before Wayne Gretzky turned 20. And 
yet despite his tender years he is now in his third season as a pro hockey player from the Edmonton area and you start to see traces of smiles now on the Oiler bench as they lead 4-2 259 to go the Canadians of Austin couldn't get that shot away 